While it might have had a lull in the middle where very little happened, the opening and end of 2019's video game calendar was outstanding. Resident Evil 2, Sekiro, Death Stranding, Outer Worlds, Devil May Cry 5, Mortal Kombat 11, all genuinely stellar titles with gargantuan budgets bringing them to life. But what about the rest? What about the titles that for one reason or another don't command the spotlight? The start of this decade saw a notable fracture between AAA and indie, but that's blossomed into a far more nuanced spectrum of production scales and quality controlled game mechanics. Today, the industry is positively thriving, but the biggest earners are still platforms for content, known IPs or bankable formulas. The titles that are guaranteed to hoover up cash in the thousands then lead followings for years on end. In honesty, we do have a bit of a problem with identical game design tropes being reused over and over, something I'm hoping the next generation tackles head on. For now though, you've likely amassed a sizable collection of great games this year, but there are so many more that are so easy to miss out on. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best video games of 2019 you haven't played. Number 10. Control Everyone knows the name of Control and what it looks like, but sales have been pretty disastrous, so that doesn't seem to have translated into anything hands-on. And that's a massive shame, because Control is Remedy standing tall as a studio with scores of recognizable signature elements that they're proud to combine. Set around a mysterious Men in Black style facility housing supernatural secrets, one Jesse Faden has to figure out what the hell is going on, while Max Payne himself, James McCaffrey, fills in a handful of details through mysterious phone conversations. Alan Wake's Matthew Peretta also features heavily as longtime collaborators Poets of the Fall offer new music to back one of the game's best sequences. Gameplay 2 is a showcase of telekinetic destruction, letting you grab and throw any part of the environment as you unlock various additional abilities, including flight, defensive shields, and mind control. All this on top of a transforming gun that gives you everything from submachine guns to grenade launchers. It is purely insane that Control is not up there with Death Stranding and Devil May Cry 5 as the best-selling titles of the year, because to be honest, it might be Remedy's best work yet. Number 9. Judgment after six mainline games and a couple of spin-offs, Sega's Ryo Gagatoku Studio wanted to take a break from Yakuza. Thankfully though, they didn't go too far, inverting the standard plot setup of following a criminal through the Kamurocho underbelly and letting you play as a private detective instead. Of course, Takayuki Yagami still knows how to bust heads with high-flying roundhouse kicks and brutally accurate punch flurries, but combat now has a far more acrobatic edge. You'll be evading far more than ever, flipping over assailants or launching off walls for mid-air grapples and finishes. While all of this is brilliant arcadey fun, and the world itself is loaded with extra activities and minigames, it's the serial killer meets past demons plot that's the real show stealer. Unshackled from the main Yakuza canon, Judgment's Daredevil adjacent mix of courtroom drama and on the streets justice is so well done, it deserves to be played by Yakuza fans and newcomers alike. Number 8. The Surge 2 the first Surge always showed promise, but for as much as it was a sci-fi Dark Souls, the game's reputation and structure struggled to put enough of an identifiable spin on that assumption. Enter The Surge 2, easily the finest non-From Software Souls game of them all, and a game that from top to bottom is loaded with tweaks, inversions, and subversions of the Souls formula. XP, while you can bank it at a bonfire-like checkpoint, can be multiplied over time if you challenge yourself not to save. Great limb-based targeting is twinned with a crafting system that gives you specific components based on which part of an enemy you've severed, tying in with vertical and horizontal attacks that means that you're always fighting mindfully. Defense is also directional, and even dodging is shaken up through jumps and ducks alongside lateral movement. All of that is just the tip of the cyber iceberg, as while Code Vein and Remnant from the Ashes were solid enough Souls clones with sex appeal and firearms respectively, The Surge 2 feels like developers Deck 13 genuinely care about advancing the fundamentals. Number 7. Trover Saves the Universe Like Rick and Morty, play Trover Saves the Universe. It is that simple. While an actual licensed Rick and Morty game already came out for the PSVR and other VR headsets called Virtual Recality, this plays like one of the channel-hopping Rick and Morty episodes, where Justin Roiland and the rest of the writer's room just sat down and riffed through the most insane ideas possible. Trover himself sounds just like Morty, and the game is a surprisingly snappy action platformer with consistent upgrades, but it's the sheer amount of idle, banterful dialogue written for each NPC that brings everything to life. Newly formed Squanch games know how gamers will stand around, poke or prod at AI scripts just to see what will happen, and they've really thought of everything. 
Upgrade vendors, Trover getting annoyed as he stumbles around, there's even an entire race of villains who all share Rick's voice, seeing them argue with one another or chastise you for killing one of their friends in what is now one of the most recognizable voices in TV history. Rick and Morty's sense of humor might not be for everyone, but if it's for you, Trova Saves the Universe is utterly brilliant. Number 6. Void Bastards Founded by ex-Bioshock talent, Blue Man Shoe's return to third-person shooting is a resoundingly fresh one, combining original Doom's liquid butter gunplay and controls with an overarching roguelite structure. As you can see, everything is lavished in a gorgeous, cel-shaded comic book style, but gameplay revolves around docking your ship on procedurally generated vessels, then seeing what treasures you can make it back to base with. Upgrades come thick and fast, letting you do more things when out on your next mission. Hacking, laying down traps, or just beefing up weapons and healing are standard, and soon you're in a supremely polished gameplay loop of risk, reward, and experimentation. Void Bastards was completely overlooked this year, and besides knowing the talent involved, there is a lot to love. Number 5. Shenmue 3 A game with a very specific selling point, being a direct continuation of where a supremely niche product left off in 2001, with not a single lesson learned about game design in the interim. The same awkward voice acting, stilted, dialogue-heavy progression, and the same reliance on arcade minigames or interacting with every drawer in a cabinet to cement a feeling of immersion. Shenmue 3 is steadfast to the version of open-world storytelling that creator Yu Suzuki pioneered with the original. It means what is now a trilogy is thoroughly innovative and recommendable as a living piece of gaming history. It might be awkward, weird, unexpected, and intentionally outdated, but Shenmue 3 feels like revisiting a memory and hugging that old relative in the present simultaneously. Number 4. Katana Zero Onto one of the snappiest Hotline Miami-inspired indies of the generation, as Katana Zero shifts the perspective to the side, makes gameplay all about slow-motion toggles, and wraps the whole thing in a brilliant story. See, all that slow-motion stuff you can see here is taking a toll on your character's mind. And the story plays out with your mysterious protagonist going to therapy, attempting to unravel why they're struggling to sleep at night or get their memory straight, only to fall back on taking more meds, accepting the next contract, and moving on to the next level. Over time, this slice-happy combat turns turns into a fun twist and turns narrative of cyberpunk tech, factional warfare, and eventually a sequel tease, combining to make Katana Zero a polished, snappy, and engaging first installment of something even greater. Number 3. Catherine Full Body your mid-twenties are a blur of hormones, half-baked commitments, and an attempt to find where the hell you stand on the whole commitment thing. Maybe you're longing to get one off the ground, or maybe you're a straight-up horn dog just looking to sow some wild oats for the foreseeable future. In Catherine, all of these things fold into the story. Playing as the bumbling idiot Vincent, you're already dating Catherine and have been for quite some time, only to find out that she's pregnant. Right at that moment, Catherine with a C comes along, and the next moment, you wake up next to her the following morning. It's here where the game alternates between awkward social situations, dialogue choices, and real-world data tracking, to let you stumble through to a solution alongside hundreds of other players. Gameplay consists of unique block-pushing puzzles with changing rule sets, being a metaphor for Vincent apparently getting his thoughts in order. However, the real quality of Catherine is in the multiple endings, how much it lets you address the way you might act in a similar situation, and how everything always gets found out in the end. Or does it? Number 2. American Fugitive a window into what GTA might look like if Rockstar released their original versions today, American Fugitive is every bit the top-down, gun-happy, vehicle-abusing formula of yore, but done before GTA 3 revolutionized the franchise. Thankfully, modern traits have been added like realistic ragdoll physics, vehicle weight, and environmental deformation. And it's all these quality-of-life improvements that let American Fugitive shine. Alongside a great visual production are awesome innovations like burgling houses for weapons and items, or stealing clothes from washing lines to lose your wanted level. American Fugitive is every bit set up to be a love letter to 90s GTA, and with enough charm from Fallen Tree games on top, it is exactly that. And number one, The Hong Kong Massacre. It's Hotline Miami meets Stranglehold. Done. As if that doesn't conjure up enough of an accurate image, Vareski's Hong Kong Massacre is literally the sweetest slow-motion moments of Max Payne slash Stranglehold gunplay, done top-down with a physics engine that revels in letting you destroy everything through gunfire. The game unfolds in these uber-slow, balletic motions as you knee-slide or dive through windows or across balconies, twin pistols, rifles, shotgun, etc. in hand, pumping round after round into gang members as particle effects, smoke, sparks, and debris all fill the screen. Difficulty is razor sharp, with just one stray bullet being the end of you and prompting a swift restart. But thankfully, the game is liberal as hell with its slow motion toggle, and you can use it to great effect. Hong Kong Massacre is a visual feast, and the nearest thing to a Max Payne reimagining anytime soon.
At least those are my picks for the best games of 2019 that I've hardly seen anybody talking about. Let me know your own favorites down in the comments below and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.